Hello and welcome to this Cancer Grace webinar. My name is Bish Machera. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I'm also the associate chair for clinical operations and improvement and the director of patient safety and quality in my department. I uh, have expertise clinically and academically in treating and doing research treating head and neck cancer patients and doing research in the clinical, uh, the clinical field of uh, head and neck oncology. I'm a radiation oncologist uh, by profession. The next uh, topic I'd like to talk about is uh, what are the, you know, what's the survival rates of HP related head and neck cancer? How do these patients do? What's the prognosis? So there is a rapidly increasing incidence of HPV-associated head and neck cancer. And so what I'm showing you here is a study done in the U.S. Uh, and basically this yellow line is all tonsil and base of tongue cancers or oropharynx cancers, showing you that the incidence overall is increasing. But when you parse it out into HPV positive versus HPV negative, the HPV negative oropharynx cancers are declining but the incidence for HPV positive cancers are rapidly increasing. And this is a relatively uh, newer phenomenon in the past two to th two, two and a half decades, say two decades. And what's also alarming is that the actual infection, so the question, I, question the, you know, people have questioned, well, HPV has been around forever, is this HPV infection that we're seeing, is this a new thing or has it been going on forever? And so this study actually went back and pulled tumor specimens from the 1980s and checked them for HPV and then did the same thing with more, rec more recent tumor samples and showed that basically that this HPV infection is a more recent phenomenon. So even though HPV has been around and it's not a new virus, the infection of the back of the throat is a new phenomenon. And this is a, an alarming finding, of course. How do these patients do? Well, generally speaking, if you have an HPV-induced oropharyngeal cancer of the base of tongue or tonsil, you are going to have a better chance at, at beating the cancer. This is probably the most seminal paper looking at what is the prognostic? Uh, uh, what is the prognostic uh, impact of HPV in um, patients who have tonsil or base of tongue cancers? And you can divide patients into having low risk cancer, meaning that their cure rate is very high, over 90%. Intermediate risk, where the cure rate is around 70% or thereabouts, and then patients who are high risk, those whose cure rates are 50% or less. And the way you stratify into low, intermediate, and high risk is based off of whether you have HPV positive to cancer or HPV negative, and also based off how much you smoke. So if you have an HPV positive tumor and a minimal smoking history, you're cons you have a good chance of beating this cancer with standard uh, cancer treatments. If you have an HPV positive tumor, but you have a somewhat higher smoking history, we classify we stratify smoking by pack years, where you ask a patient, how many packs have you smoke a day? Do you smoke a day? They'll say, oh, I smoke one pack per day. You ask, how many years have you done that? They say, oh, I've been doing it for 20 years. And then we say, then we, then we multiply number of packs per day by number of years and we call it pack years. And so the, that patient would have a 20-pack year history. So if he, that patient had HP positive tumor but 20-pack year history, um, we would consider them more an intermediate risk here. And if, you are, if your tumor is completely HPV negative, uh, you, are, you are considered um, high risk. And so having a, the HPV associated or HPV induced or um, an HPV, uh, finding the HPV in the tumor sample actually is a, is a good prognostic marker. It doesn't at this time, in a point in time, predict for what kind of treatment you should get, but we check it in all patients because it helps us give patients a better idea of how they're going to do with treatment. In fact, the staging system is going to change probably in the next year or two where uh, HPV is going to be factored into the staging system. And why is this important? So currently, if you come in with an HPV-positive tonsil or oropharynx cancer, with the current staging system, 
majority of patients have stage four cancer. And stage four cancer is a scary thing to tell, to, to tell a patient that they have because there's a stigma that if you have stage four cancer that you're going to die from your cancer. And that is not true, as I showed you in the last slide. So the staging system is going to change in the near future to where in the new staging system, if you have a HPV positive tonsil or basic tongue cancer, your new stage, most patients won't be stage four, they'll be recategorized in stage one or two, which is uh, a better uh, 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 categorization of uh, the, how they're going to do with treatment. Typically stage one or two patients have a high chance of a cure. And so the staging system is going to change in the next few years most likely. 